Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today we will be taking a look at a British mathematics Olympiad question. It will be taken from the 2020 paper and we'll look at the first question. So let's look at the question. Um, I'll just let you have a quick read before I explain it on the whiteboard. Okay, so I hope you understood the question. Um, if not, don't worry, we'll be explaining it now. So pretty much the question wants us um, to describe a given Roman numeral number. So let's say we have an m, x, x. So we basically want to describe this number um, in Roman numerals. So the, the, the way we would describe this um, just generally would be like uh, the frequency of the number multiplied by the actual number. If you're familiar with one length encoding, this is um, pretty much the same thing as that. So we have two m's, hence we'll be um, taking two initially, and then m. And then after this, uh, we'll have two x's, so then we'll do two, and we'll have another x. So this is basically how you describe this number in terms of its frequency followed by the occurrence of each character. And now we just need to convert this number into a Roman numeral format. So the two will basically become ii. The m will stay as is because it's already Roman numeral. The two will also become ii again, and this will become x. So this will become the uh, resulting Roman numeral conversion of the above um, number. And now let's take another example. Let's say we have vi. So this is basically one lot of v, and then one lot of i. So that will basically become iv, iv, i, i, sorry. Because i translates to one, v as is, i to 1, and i as is. So I hope you understand the process, and now we'll be taking a quick look at how I tackled the solution to this problem. So um, the main way is that we'll basically have some sort of array which has all the numbers, all the numerical numbers from 1 to 5000. And then, um, what this array will store is all of these numbers corresponding for a manual representation. Okay. And now, let, let's say we have 2000 somewhere in the middle of this array. It will have um, whatever the representation of 2000 is, mm, and then finally 5000, uh, which I'm not actually sure on the top of my head, but um, the point is that this array will have all of these numbers and um, representation. And now the way this will help us is that if you recall back to our process of um, translating m m x x into 2m 2x, we need some way um, to get the Roman Roman numerical representation of these numbers. And to get them we'll just look, um, look the values up inside our array and then concatenate uh, this resulting string of Roman numerals and then that will basically be our answer. So now the main challenge of this um, question is actually creating this array in the first place. Um, and the question's helped us a bit in explaining how row neurons work. So if we go back to the question, they basically have um, this section over here. So Roman numerals, um, are the, these are basically the building blocks, if you like, of row numerals, and all the other numbers are based on these numbers. And I'll just let you have a quick read in case you're not familiar with how Roman numerals work. Okay, and now uh, let's just go back to the whiteboard and explain how we'll create this array. So th this is basically um, a dynamic program question. Since, um, if you notice, uh, for, for creating this, a larger number, let's just say 7, we need to first um, go back to what the Roman numerical format of 5 is and 2 is. And then after combining both of these, only then we will get a 7. So um, let me just show you what I mean by an example. So 7 is basically 5 plus 2. So Roman numerals, that would be the V and then I, I. Okay? And uh, that's basically how we're going to tackle this question. For each number, let's generalize what we just discussed here. For each M, we need to um, see what the largest um, possible X is where x is um, 1, 5, 10, 50, 
hundred, five hundred, and one thousand. So all of these are these um, numbers. These aren't like randomly chosen. These are the building blocks of Roman numerals. Since all numbers um, are initially based off this, so we need to see what the largest um, x i is, where x i is the uh, i is um, an index of this array x, and this number will basically be made up of um, x i, depending on how many times x i goes into this number, plus x i plus one, how many times x i plus one goes into the number, and so on. So, for example, uh, let's say we're creating 1,342. So that will basically be one lot of 3,000, one, one lot of 1,000. Okay. And now, um, after this, we're left with creating the um, number for 342. So now, 342 doesn't go into 500 any times. Okay. Since 500 is greater than 342, but it goes into 100 three times. Okay. And now we're left with 42. 42 doesn't go into 50, but it goes into 10 four times. However, um, 42, as per Roman numeral format, will actually be written as 40 plus 2. Now 40 is written as 50 minus 10. Okay. And then finally, this will be 2. Therefore, 1342 is just the concatenation of all of these individual strings. And inside our array, we basically have the Roman numerical format for all of them. And then we can just look them up, concatenate the string, and that will be the um, numerical format for 1342. And yes, that's pretty much how we'll solve the question. So now let's have a quick look at the code which I developed for this question. Okay, so um, let's just see that. This function, um, I'll come to it a bit later, um, but first I'll come to how um, the array was developed, as I explained on the whiteboard. So um, the array is called DP, Dynamic Programming, so short. And we initially initialize it to all um, empty strings. And um, I've done this uh, by thousands, and excuse me. The maximum number which goes inside um, the, the array is uh, 5,000. And these are all the special numbers, pretty much all of these numbers. So 1, 5, 10, 50, 100, 500, 1000, these are the building blocks, and 4, 9, and etc, etc. All of these are the only anomalies inside um, whenever we construct a number, since in Roman numerals, if you want to construct 4, you, you do it as 5 minus 1, you don't do like 1 4 times. So then, therefore, um, I've kind of hard coded, if you like, but the values for these, but every other number I, I, I emphasize this, every other number can be made, can be represented as some combination of all of these numbers. Okay. So um, now I've just called these special numbers, uh, all, all of these numbers inside this um, array, and special letters are all their corresponding numbers. And now, um, pretty much, what we iterate through each of um, the 5,000 uh, numbers since this for loop will just end up um, initializing the db array to all the values. And it's also worth noting that um, we'll be accessing all of these um, numbers by their index. And since we're starting from index 0, um, the, the first number will basically be 0, which is kind of redundant, which means if we take db of i, um, the index i, that would be the ith number, which is what we want. However, if we start with one base, we might face some issues. So um, we iterate through each of the 5,000 numbers. And now, um, if not dp of i, so what this basically means is that if dp of i isn't empty, okay? So um, if dp of i isn't empty, only then it will continue. No, so, so, sorry, sorry, if dp of i is empty. Because if dp of i isn't empty, and that means it's one of these um, lot of special values. So, and we clearly don't want to override the values over. There. So, if not DP of i, for j in range seven, what this does is we basically iterate through each of these special numbers and their corresponding special letters. And now, if i is greater than special numbers um, j, so what this does is uh, the, the particular um, 
uh, I, or let, let's say we waited 13 through 1003, uh, 1, for example, over here. So if 1003 is greater than the first special number, then what we'll do is um, the representation of 1003 will be the representation of 1000 plus the representation of 3, right? And that's basically, um, and as soon as we've done this, we can just break. And the reason why we, for J in range 7, we need to iterate through all the special letters until we find the largest letter, which is less than the number, okay? Since that will be the first letter inside of its representation. And that's pretty much, um, we iterate, and then that's how we create one letter, and we just repeat the process. And the key to my programming thing in this question is that we reuse our previous um, numbers to form later ones. So this was the main part of this question. Uh, like after this, things are pretty straightforward. So now I'll just quickly jump to something I skipped earlier, the um, f function. All this does is converts um, the input string to the function string one into its already form or run length coding or its frequency form basically, as I was explaining earlier. So what it does is um, let's say mmxx, that this will basically create um, it, this as two lots of m and two lots of x. Um, the code is, is pretty straightforward, so we iterate through each character. If the character is equal to the previous character, or the previous character is none, previous character being none is our initial condition, we increment the count by one. Otherwise, we basically, um, in our output as string temporarily, we concatenate uh, the dp of count. dp of count is the numerical representation of the counting things, for example, to be translated to ii. And then the previous character, since the previous character is the character which has been occurred, the, um, the count number of times. Okay. And then we reset count to one, and we also make the previous character um, the current character we're creating over for the next operation, obviously. And now, if the count is greater than zero, um, so after we've iterated through this um, uh, until we reach the last character, this um, last if group basically just ensures that the final um, block of characters haven't been excluded. If we didn't have this, then um, after this, uh, let's say at the end of the string we had um, xx, then xx wouldn't, wouldn't be factored inside the out since um, this condition would never be met since uh, the string has been finished, right? And then um, after we do that, we basically have the output string, and this is what the function returns. And, um, and, and now the rest of it is pretty trivial. Uh, we just accept the input of the string and the number of times we want to um, carry out this process. And for i in range int n, so just iterating over um, this particular process n times, we get the numerical um, representation of this, and then followed by, and then uh, at the final um, print message is just printing the count of the i and count of v as the question asked for. So um, now that we're done with that, let's have a quick look at if our program um, seems to work for some of the sample test cases. Okay, so let's test it on the not one. Okay, it basically is, it gives us two eight five eight and eleven oh four. If we go back to the question, we can see that that is correct. And now let's just test it on the very final case. Gives us 19013 um, and 7333. Now, if we go back to the question, we can see that is indeed correct. So, that is pretty much it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed and learned something new about um, this clever little dynamic program question. If you did, please be sure to subscribe and like the video, and I'll see you in another video next time. Thank you for watching. Bye.